previously we completed about the design flow part one, that is the front end designing part, where we saw the various design flows. That is, first of all, the specification part, where, where the customer de decides the specification of the chip required, that is the power and speed. Then it is goes towards the microarchitecture level. And then the microarchitecture is transferred to the design engineers for writing down the RTL design code using Verilog or VHDL or some HDL uh, codes. Then it is sent for simulation and verification part uh, where the verification is being done by test benches using some high level languages such as C, C++. Nowadays, even Java and Python are being used. Then it is sent for synthesis where the gate level Verilog is uh, combined with some design constraints by tools such as uh, by Synopsys company where the constraints such as clock speed, power, even technological nodes such as 14 nanometer or seven nanometer are being uh, depicted. Then it is transferred towards the DFT engineers where the DFT engineers or design for testability engineers attaches uh, some specific circuitry to the circuit for attaining the several design constraints which are not made, not made by the verification engineers alone. They create a file called as .atpg, automated test pattern generated file, which are then being sent for the backend design engineers for the rest of the part. So I will request you all to visit the previous video on ACID Design Pro Part 1 that will give you a better picture. And then you can continue with this video about the backend designing part. So uh, in this video, we will be uh, talking about the backend designing part that is from step six to step 11 about the float planning, the placement, the clock tree synthesis, the routing, the final verification and the GDS uh, information interchange file. Now, starting with the float planning, float planning as the name depicts, we can understand about, it tells about the float planning. That is how the modules or some micro level chips are being integrated into the grids. Now, the float planning usually occurs uh, by some specific engineers where they customize the floor planning in such a way that they, it minimizes the total chip area. Uh, the routing is uh, mentioned as minimum as possible to reduce the interconnections delays. And even the clocks queues are also being checked in the floor planning itself. Basically, it gives the blueprinting of the chip. Now, after floor planning, the placement occurs. The final placement uh, about where the and how the chips are produced. Now, in the placement, the power planning and the place designing are also being occurred, uh, uh, takes place, such as uh, the placement engineers are responsible for checking the uh, power dissipation. That is, they check whether the placement of a particular macros or uh, modules in a particular area is right or not by uh, minimizing the power capability and also uh, minimizing the time constraints in the design. So, placement is, becomes also a very important uh, role in the backend design. Now, after placement is being done, it is sent for the clock tree synthesis, where the uh, ST engineers check whether there are any clock skews or not. In this picture, I have depicted that if there is a single clock and there are several modules, then whether or not this clock is attaining each and every modules, or rather flip clocks at the same time or not, whether there are any clock jitters or not. Now, the main aim of uh, ST engineers are that uh, it ensures that there are zero skews, and uh, it uh, also added some additional circuitry such as clock buffers and clock inverters uh, to make sure that the clock reaches to each and every flip flops at the same time without any uh, jitter. There are also several uh, structures such as H3 structure, X3 structure, fishbone structure. These are some high level advanced uh, structures that are used by engineers for uh, ensuring that the clock reaches to each and every flip flops at the same time or not. Now after uh, placement, uh, the clock, uh, the clock tree synthesis is being done, then it is sent for routing. Now routing is of two types, the global routing and the detailed routing. Routing is the, basically the interconnection of several modules within the uh, chip. Now global routing is basically, it estimates the value uh, such as some quantity such as fan out of the wire by just simplifying uh, normal connections between them. This is not the final routing, but then it is sent for the detailed routing where uh, detailed routing arises and uh, Several methods such as, uh, again, ST engineers comes and check whether after final route, detail routing, whether or not the clocks are reaching towards it or not. So it is the back and forth, uh, like passing of the chips until and unless it makes sure that the timing constraints are met, power constraints are also met. These things are sure, then only it is sent for the final verification. Now in the final verification, 
they are done with the either time congestion te- time technique or the congestion technique they check whether or not the placement is uh, occurring rightly or not the routing is done properly or not uh, so up before take out the following errors are like avoided such as the layout versus schematic lps and the design rule checks drcs and uh, logical equivalence checks lbcs these six are checked by, uh, in the final verification steps before converting this into a gds file now what is a gds gds is nothing but graphical data stream information interchange this is the this is the final file uh, which is being generated by the asic design flow team this file is sent to the fab labs for producing the actual asic now this file is very much crucial as it is the like highly checked file and it is almost totally verified uh, almost verified means not all something or but almost 95% almost verified the clock jitters are removed Uh, if there are any bugs there that is also removed so this is the final file that a gds uh, in- information interchange file this file is basically usually done with some eda tools mainly cadence and this final file is being sent to the fab labs or the semiconductor manufacturing companies before they finally like produce the chip and give it to the customer so here this is a long process of asic design so right from the specification micro architecture rtl design synthesis dft to the back end designing where the floor planning and the uh, placement and routing and the clock tree and synthesis the final verification till the production of gds2 file is totally known as asic design flow so i think it will be very much helpful for your knowledge and also for placement per point of view so that's all from my side today thank you